with the idea of making the dovetail ways for the cross slide of the lathe, I've endeavored in building a rig for my angle grinder to let me do this job. Despite the apparent result, as you will see later in the video, that ended up into kinda disastrous failure. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Starting from the beginning of the new year, uh, the last months were troublesome. Um, at first I had a health issue, uh, luckily ended up in nothing serious. Um, then uh, Covid-19 arrived uh, and, uh, you know, everything went screwed up. Um, at the given point, I didn't even have the ability to move around and, uh, and every shop was shut down. Anyway, the life seems to be back to normal. Uh, still, there are some rules to follow, but uh, everything uh, is back to normal. So, it's time to move on. I started recovering a scrapped part from an old jig and working on the other parts required to complete the rig. Here I'm preparing the parts that are required to make the seat of the ingot grinder on the rig. So this rig is meant to uh, cut uh, uh, a part at a precise angle, uh, pushing the part against a reference point and to let the uh, axis to be ground away uh, by the angle grinder. This in theory. The practice is a little bit different as you will see later in the video. Here's the first mistake. Uh, I, I've realized this uh, after watching the video, uh, but uh, you, you can see here the, the, the part that have the flap that is meant to hold the seat is not perfectly aligned with the section that grabs uh, the angle grinder. And this is the guide holder that uh, should move uh, back and forward uh, to adjust the distance from the disc. The rig should uh, hold the um, angle grinder at a precise angle and at a, a precise distance from the from a, a guide. Here I'm drilling, cutting, and filing uh, to make the elongated hole uh, that allows the guide to move back and forward. And it's interesting that uh, even the simpler things, so like this one, uh, require a lot of work. And I don't know about you, but uh, uh, I, despite the, despite checking multiple times, uh, often I, I fall in the stupid errors and mistakes that uh, <laughs> ruins and spoil uh, even the best uh, intended work. And these parts uh, will form the base of the arm uh, that will hold the seat of the angle grinder. And um, this uh, elongated hole uh, is used to uh, move uh, the arm up and down. And these parts are, are uh, required to, to fit perfectly the square tube that is used as uh, the arm uh, that will hold the angle grinder. Once put the parts together, I've realized that uh, there was an excessive uh, step on top, uh, on the top side. So I've put that uh, L-shaped piece of steel uh, as a shim. As you can see, the square tube slides perfectly inside the new built base. 
and here the L-shaped bar is welded to the uh, the flat bar to make the moving guide and um, and the parts are are kept nice and square And here I'm cutting the L-shaped bar uh, to make room for the disc uh, of the Inga grinder. And the base of the arm is welded onto the base of the rig. And the welding, as you can see here, is not my strongest point. <laughs> okay. I'm not a good welder, but I knew a trick uh, because when you weld on one side, um, the, 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 the part tend to lean on that side that you welded and uh, because the metal shrinks and uh, so I've put a, a, a shim below the base before welding uh, so that uh, after welding the shim is removed uh, that makes room for uh, the part to be uh, made nice and square with a good hit with a hammer. A millimeter or so is enough and then uh, the part is welded all around. And here the various holes and tappet holes uh, on the arm uh, that will hold the seat of the, onto which the angle grinder will be fixed. And here we go, the, let's assemble the final rig, the rig, and uh, this is the arm that is uh, slided into the base and fixed with this uh, screw. And this is the seat that will uh, hold the angle grinder, the seat uh, is uh, uh, bolted on the arm with two screws one is let pivot the, 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 the seat and the other one fix the seat at, at uh, the tilted desired position however remember this is kind of an experiment that might require more adjustments and uh, this is the uh, the guide that can move back and forward and um, is uh, locked with this screw easy to, to, to lock and uh, this is the uh, angle grinder that sits uh, on, the, on the seat and uh, is uh, kept in place uh, uh, with two fixtures nice and solid and uh, here we go the final rig the the arm can be um, raised up and the seat can be moved, can be tilted uh, to change the angle, the, the, the angle, the cut angle, and the, and the guide can be moved back and forward to adjust the distance from the disc. So let's try to see how the rig works. Uh, after a couple of inches the grinder started to stall 
and um, I'm jamming the the part uh, so I think uh, this is due to a little bit of misalignment I think uh, uh, one problem is uh, it is really hard when you re reach this point to 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 keep the the, the part from being sucked in also I've tried to change the disc uh, to um, to grind on the surface and to try to make a shallow depth of cut um, but uh, 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 reach a uh, given point uh, the part weren't uh, sucked in and uh, jammed and thrown away on the other side uh, with force which is quite dangerous and of course I did this with this safety button so I've decided to make some modifications so I've put the uh, base on top of this C bar and made it movable back and forward to adjust the distance from the guide and uh, the guide modified and changed it in a way that it no longer uh, squeeze the part against the disc but the part must be pushed against the disc and this is how it operates So I've made some modifications to the, uh, the rig, uh, correcting the alignment and uh, uh, changing the way it works by pushing the part against the disc instead of being squeezed between the, the, within the, the guide. And, um, and the result uh, was quite interesting. Uh, but it is way too much imprecise to be used for the dovetails uh, to make the dovetails for for the ways um, so uh, I, even uh, so also because i push it too hard against the disc uh, and the magic smoke went out of the angle grinder and yeah my beloved makita died uh, so I decided to change uh, the design and uh, make the things simpler so I, I will try to show you in, in the next video the new design uh, this can this this time was kind of failure but uh, yeah yeah so thanks for watching see you next time bye so let's see what happened uh, I I really opened the the back of the angle grinder. Uh, here you can see here the rotor inside here, and uh, when I turn the the shaft here, and the rotor slowly turning the shaft, the rotor turns around. So we check uh, each contact uh, through the brushes. Uh, we can check uh, each one of the coils uh, that forms uh, that form the 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 rotor of the motor. Put this in some point that we can read uh, reliably the resistance. Uh, measuring the resistance of the of the of each coil. Uh, let us understand uh, if the coil is somewhat shorted. So we see here we have one coil is 3.3, 3.8. Well, we have here 4 ohm and uh, 4.8, 4.9, 2, 1.7, 2. Here we are. We see there are one of the coils one of the coils here we have 
1.7 ohm, 1.6 ohm. Here, uh, we, here we go. We have one of the coils where uh, one or more turns of the coil are shorted and therefore the resistance is lower. Uh, when this coil that is partially shorted uh, through the brushes is put into the circuit, uh, uh, the current rises much more than normal and um, less power goes to the magnetic circuit, uh, gen therefore generating less force and more power goes, uh, goes lost in, uh, in heat. Uh, and that is why the grinder run so bad and um, uh, the the smoke uh, comes out uh, of the grinder because the, the, the heat this is what happens when the 